Hello and welcome to part two on my underrated and underappreciated movies series. So if you missed the first video, make sure you check out the description down below so you don't miss out on part one of this video where I shared five underrated and underappreciated movies. And then stick around for this one as we jump into the intro and we'll get going on my list of my other five underrated and underappreciated movies. Welcome once again, my name is Austin and this channel is all about digging deeper and going further to better understand faith and film and everything that's in between. If that sounds exciting to you, make sure you click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any new content. And without further ado, let's jump into my part two picks for five underrated and underappreciated movies. First, over my right shoulder, we have Live, Die, Repeat or Edge of Tomorrow. I mostly go with Edge of Tomorrow on this one because Live, Die, Repeat's whatever. The title is weird. This was a horribly marketed movie, but it is a great action movie. Emily Blunt and Tom Cruise stand very high in this movie of which performance is better. They're both great. There's tons of awesome action. I believe this is actually based on a manga that was back in maybe the 90s or something like that. But the movie itself is great. It does a really cool job with telling a sci-fi kind of end of the world time travel apocalypse movie. It, like I said, the action is great in this one. It has some really cool themes about like the choices we make and how that may affect the world around us and kind of the self-responsibility that each of us has. I really enjoy this one. It unfortunately bombed pretty hard at the box office from what I remember, but there is a sequel floating around somewhere in Hollywood for this one, and I really hope we can get this one made. Next, also over my right shoulder, we have an Owen Wilson movie that I have been vouching for since the first time I saw it. I did not see this one back when it initially came out. I believe I watched this one for the first time when it was on like Prime Video at some point and just immediately fell in love with it. The movie is so cool. It kind of takes Owen Wilson out of his box and gives him something new to try. He's usually more well known for kind of mostly comedy, some of his dramatic roles, but this is a very dramatic movie. It is a very much edge of your seat action thrill ride. This is one of the most intense movies I have seen personally from the first maybe 10 or 15, 20 minutes setup. After that point, after the setup is complete and the action starts, I was on the edge of my seat from that point to roll credit. It was an incredibly enthralling experience and one that I try to recommend to as many people as I can. I got my brother onto this one, he loves it, and I try to recommend it to as many people as I can, especially Owen Wilson fans who love him for his comedy, just to see him try something different. Uh, the rest of the cast is really good too. Pierce Brosnan is also in it. He has a really cool character as well. And like I said, the setup, if you walked into this movie completely blind, you think you might be walking into like a family drama drama, maybe with a bit of comedy thrown in there, but like, as soon as the action kicks in, it does not let up. I love this movie, I recommend it as many times as I can, and it doesn't get the recognition it deserves. So check this one out if you got a chance. Next, starting with the movies over my left shoulder, first we have Searching. Searching is a 2018 release, one of the most uniquely made films I have seen in recent memory. The whole movie takes place through screens. And what I mean by that is almost like screen captures of cell phones, tablets, uh, webcams, all that kind of stuff. And it's filmed to look like it's just screen grabs of all of these people's devices. And it follows the kind of mystery disappearance of this man's daughter and his journey to try and figure out what happened to her, where she is, and try and save her. So it's an incredibly immersive experience. You really kind of forget that you're just watching a movie that is told through screen captures and phones and tablets and all that, like I mentioned. It's, it's a very fun, exciting movie. You're kind of piecing things together throughout and the story is very mysterious and you're really invested in the mystery at the core, trying to figure it out along with the father figure. So this is one that was fairly well received, but in my opinion, not enough people know about it. So I wanted to put it on this list to recommend as many people as I can. It's one of my favorite like mystery dramas that really gets the audience invested in the story and following along to try and solve the mystery along with the characters. Next, we have also over my shoulder here in the middle, Tron Legacy. Tron Legacy 
I can see is a little bit different in that it almost has kind of a cult classic following, much like the original Tron movie that came out in I think the 70s. I have seen the original one at least once. I'd like to revisit it soon just to kind of piece things together a little more, but uh, I revisited Tron Legacy uh, about a year or so ago for the first time in a while and just picked up on some awesome stuff that I really never picked up on before. Did a really cool video about it that I'm really proud of. Uh, I'll link to that one somewhere either up in a card or the description down below in the video, something like that. I really like this one. I kind of feel that it's almost a parable for Christianity in some ways and it's really got some really interesting deep themes that are really fun to just kind of ponder and think about. Uh, the, obviously the special effects, the world of Tron and the grid is so cool and so immersive, something that would just be really fun to explore given the opportunity in real life. So obviously, like I said, this has a bit of a cult classic, so I'm not the first one to say, hey, check this one out. It's kind of getting a little bit of a resurgence. Every time news of a Tron 3 comes up, there's a bit of a resurgence and a love for this movie. So we definitely want to keep this one up on the trend and hope Hopefully we can finally get that Tron 3. Finally we have, this might be, let me check, I believe this came out in 28, okay 2017. This might be one of the best movies that came out in 2017 and not that many people have seen it. It is actually a film by Taylor Sheridan, which if you're a fan of his work, you may follow along with the Yellowstone series that has Kevin Costner in it. My wife and I recently got into that for the first time and absolutely loved it, especially when I found out it was by Taylor Sheridan who did this movie. He has a really unique perspective of looking at things from a authentic and real perspective of Native American and kind of their culture. I don't know a ton about him and his background, but he has such a good and genuine understanding of that culture, I think. And this movie really explores that well, kind of similarly to the Yellowstone series where it's very authentic and realistic feeling. It's almost like there's just straight up real stories. This is another very similar one. It stars Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen who are kind of MCU darlings at this point. Their work is well loved in the MCU, but this is something very different from that. This is a, a kind of similar, I guess, to Searching. It's kind of a murder mystery. Obviously, this isn't a true story, but I think it's based on true events, and it has kind of a message of what life is like for Native Americans in the US in modern times. It tells a very compelling story of a kind of modern Western out in the mountains in the mid, in the West, and it follows Jeremy Renner's character as he tries to solve this murder disappearance. It is a brutal movie at times with the themes and messages that it kind of deals with, but it is one that is incredibly impactful for me, one that I love and try to recommend to people as often as I can. So if you have not seen the movie Wind River, be prepared. It's not a light movie by any means. It's very serious and very well done as well. Executed very well in my opinion, but it's one I try to recommend as often as I can for people, especially those who are interested in Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen and kind of want to see them do something a little bit different outside of the average box that we've seen them in so far. So that concludes part two on my underrated and underappreciated movies list. Obviously this list can kind of go on and on, but at least for the time being, it's a two-part list. I could definitely throw together some more underappreciated and underrated movies if that's what you're interested in. So if you want to see more picks for some underrated, underappreciated movies that I can recommend to you to check out, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to do so. I loved putting this kind of two-parter together. It's been a lot of fun and I'd love to see it continue in a part three, part four, and kind of be an ongoing thing. That'd be awesome. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any new content. Like this video if you kind of learned something and picked up on a new movie that I was able to recommend to you. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.